testing, testing, one, two, three. We are filming today a foundation review. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, my name is Misa and I do uploads every Monday and Wednesday. Today we are going to be doing a little wear test on the Wet n Wild Photo Stick Foundation. This claims to be semi-matte. You should be able to wear this from sun up to sun down. Blurring effect. We're gonna see how it goes. I have dry skin. If you're interested in seeing how this foundation wears and if it would be a really good fit for you, go ahead and keep on watching. Jumping right into the foundation application. All right, so this color is Shell Bis. Okay, the ease of foundation sticks is out of this world. If you find one you like, they're perfect to travel with, perfect if you really need to put something on really fast. That's why stick foundations have always really intrigued me. And it's really easy because you don't even have to guess what type of tool to use to apply because brushes buff stick foundations out amazing. But the color looks about right. This might look a little bit of a different undertone. It's the best I could, people, right? I do feel like the coverage is almost full coverage, but more so of a medium once blended out because I'm still seeing some freckles popping through. This product, it seems like a little stiffer to blend out too. This brush is the Real Technique. It's just a nice, I think it's an expert face brush. I will get the exact names for you. I've had this for years and I'm going to be making a video about the best foundation brushes because hey, I think we could all <laughs> use that information. Okay, I am having a little bit of a hard time blending this out. I'm gonna go went with a little bit more product. Empty hearts and neon lights. Not quite sure if it's the same formula as the Wet n Wild Photo Focus, their liquid foundation, because I really did like that foundation. Okay, I changed the light settings a little bit so we can see exactly what's going on. First and foremost, it was really actually pretty difficult to blend out. I feel like the product was a little stiff. I did have to go back with multiple layers just because blending, I missed some spots. I do like the coverage. It doesn't look too heavy. It doesn't look too cakey. And it does have, it's definitely semi-matte, but it does leave like just a nice, Glow. You could get away with not setting this. Uh, I definitely want to set this, but before we go in with that, I want to go ahead and do my concealer. I am using the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer, and the shade is M150 Buff Beige. So this concealer, it's very hydrating, it's great for dry skin, very liquidy. I like to work with sections in this one because it does seem to kind of set a little bit if you do it all over your face and then it's hard to blend out. So I just like to do a little bit at a time. All right, this is where we're at with foundation and the concealer. I think it looks good. It's not absolutely my favorite finish, but I think once we get all the makeup on, it will really bring everything together. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the concealer with this hourglass powder. Concealer, I always like to use a powder to set my under eyes. That's just any areas that I tend to crease a lot, my forehead. Then let's go in with the Milani Prep Set and Go Pressed Powder. Such a great drugstore powder, and I'm just using a big fluffy brush to set everything. Do you like to set your foundation? I want to know, let me know in the comments. I have to, I feel like everything just blends so well after it, and we can always bring it back to life with a really good setting spray. <sighs> White monsters are so good. All right, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna hop off, do the rest of my makeup, and I'll be, I will be right Back. All right guys, this is the finished look. I really love how it turned out. I feel like it's really fresh, pink, really feminine, and it's just not too heavy. I'm going to go over the products I use really fast. This is the Butter Bronzer. Love this bronzer, great drugstore product. This is the shade Sunkiss. My recommendation with this is to go in with a really light hand. It does pull a little bit orange. You definitely want to kind of tone it down a little bit with blush, which with blush, I went in with this Kylie Cosmetics. We're going shopping blush, pink, fresh. Go in with a light hand with this as well because it is very pigmented. You don't want to get too carried away. With both of these I went in with as an eyeshadow so I just kind of made this a very monochromatic look and then to kind of pop my eyes give it a halo effect I went in with the supernova shadow by Colourpop Cosmetics I believe this is the collab they did with Kathleen Light in the color Constellation and I think it turned out just really pretty and then to brighten everything up I use this banana powder from Kat Von D I do have a big drugstore haul coming I really know that I can find all these different products that can accomplish the same thing with a fraction of the cost so I'm really excited for this that. And then, oh, last but not least, lip color, I went in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Crush, really pinkish mauve. And then to set everything, I went in with the Illuminating Dewy Glow. This is by uh, Catrice Cosmetics, and this is the first time purchased one of their products, and it's such a great price, and I really do feel, feel like it set everything really well. Then I did forget to bring down a highlighter, so I just used my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. Oh, the two light 
lightest shades to just kind of give myself a little bit of a highlight. All right, so right now it is 11.25. Gonna be wearing this foundation for probably eight hours, so I will keep you guys updated, let you know how it goes, and I will see you soon. Hey guys, I am here to check in on the foundation. It is 3.04 p.m., so the foundation has been on for almost four hours. <laughs> for almost four hours. We went and ran some errands, got some lunch. Foundation, I think, looks really good from far away. I feel like it looks airbrushed. If you have oily skin, I don't feel like your oils break through very badly with this foundation at all. Like, it's very matte still, and only thing I'm seeing right now is it's just creasing between my eyes. And then underneath my eyes, I am not sold completely on this concealer. I don't use it all the time, and I saw a couple good reviews on it, and so I thought I'd give it a chance again, but I don't know. We're gonna yeah. keep seeing how it goes, and I will keep you guys in the loop. All right, guys, last check-in. It is eight o'clock. Foundation has been on for almost nine hours. How it's looking. I actually think for nine hours, this looks pretty flipping good. I mean, my blush is still intact. Nothing is like melting away. So I think this is a great foundation if you have oily skin or combination skin and you need something that's not going to just slip away. A few things I have noticed with dry skin though. It's creasing. It is creased and caught on my nose a little bit. That's kind of like unflattering, right? It just looks a little drying. It is settling into some fine lines in between my brows. And then I think the biggest thing that's been kind of bugging me today is that concealer. It's so creasy. Like I don't have this creasing problem near as much when I use my Milani or my Tarte Shape Tape. Oh, I don't know if I should keep using it. For this foundation, it doesn't transfer super easily, which is great. The price point is awesome. So out of a one through five, I give this three. It is hard to blend, but for nine hours of wear, I still feel like I look really fresh and I can just like touch up little things and it not, I'm not gonna look like I touched up old makeup. It just looks, still kind of looks fresh. So those are my thoughts and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye.